Uh, too loud. Uh, my name is Pierre Andriani. I'm the uh, digital modeling manager at Tata Motors in the UK, and we'll get to Mathiel in a second. Uh, first of all, let me say it's an honor for us at Tata Motors to be uh, here on stage with uh, everybody else, such as movie makers, scientists, and uh, you know, oh, what do you do? Uh, we do cars. So it's, it's pretty cool. And again, thank you very much for having us here. So again, we'll just go, I'll just go through a quick inter introduction of Tata Motors, and then Mathieu will describe what we've done with uh, Blender in the last year, and then follow out with uh, our present and future needs with Blender, and uh, followed by what I call the Blender effect, our contribution to Blender, and Q&As will be after the presentation. Uh, basically, TMETC stands for Tata Motors European Technical Center. We are in our 11th anniversary in the Coventry in the UK, we're a uh, wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Tata Motors in uh, India. This is the shot of Studio 2. Uh, as you can see, we do uh, full, uh, full um, service design. So you can see the Nexon models as well as clay models in the background. Uh, what I like to call us at TMETC, we are what's called, well, I like to call, the tip of the spear. So, as anything that's R&D and really advanced technologies, uh, we are the ones who experiment it, and then we're the ones who roll this world out to the, to the rest of the company. So we are UK-based center for automotive design. What that means is we can start from a sketch and then I'll go all the way to nerve surfacing, all the way to a uh, show car such as the Nexon, and finishing off with a production car of the Nexon, which was done in the UK and will be uh, on sale next year. Uh, this is a shot of the uh, NAIC, the National Automotive In um, Innovation Center. It will be a 150 million, uh, 150 million pound facility, which will be shared between Tata Motors, uh, Jaguar Land Rover Advanced Design, the Warwick Manufacturing Group, and the UK government. Uh, I just had a tour of this facility on Friday, actually on Thursday, and it's uh, it's going to be a great R&D facility, and I'm hoping by that time we'll have. Um, Full, a full team dedicated to rendering animation in Blender, most likely. So we'll move into that facility next year. And this is a shot of the current construction. And it's a very exciting time to be at TMETC. So without further ado, this is Mathilde. She's the one who, she's the reason I'm here. So let's talk about Blender. So there she is. Hello everyone, um, so yeah, this year I'm going to talk about everything we've done the past year, just going slightly a bit, um, for everyone who haven't seen the talk or don't re remember, I'm going to speak a bit about the process in uh, TMETC and everything we achieved in one year. Um, so, basically, to remember uh, from last year, that's our process. We are using uh, Blender in the um, uh, modeling phase, in the sketch modeling, because that's where we need to um, have more time. We need to experiment more things on the shapes of the car, interior or exterior. Um, we have a lot of changes to do as well at that time, so Blender allows to have a lot of flexibilities in the model compared to areas and compared to the nerve surfacing. Um, so since last year, we keep working on Blender in uh, the sketch modeling phase and a little bit further away if we need to try something to have like a very big modification on the model or, um, that happens sometimes. And since last year, um, like this summer, I was in India for a uh, almost three months uh, in the um, in the mother um, mother company of Tata Motors, and uh, over there I had a two months project with them where um, I introduced them Blender um, in the process modeling. So um, I get two months to show the advantages of using Blender compared to the advantages of using Arias and basically had two uh, vehicles to build at the same time and show in how long I could 
work uh, with Blender compared to LES and how we can just... Go faster. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so in TMETC last, last year, um, we tried to have a full exterior um, milling in hard model straight from Blender. That's the first fail we have. <laughs> um, the shape of the car was very, really too complicated for um, our subtractor to handle the STL afterwards and to cut the STL as, as I wanted to build a hard model. Uh, so we needed to go back to NURBS and for that uh, we needed so to have a um, Maya version inside for going through polygonal to NURBS by going from IGS. Um, so that was a learning for us saying that if we have a very complicated model, we can't go directly from Blender to uh, engineering or to, uh, we have to go through NURBS. Um, and another thing we've experimented for the first time is we've done a complete interior uh, in Blender from, from scratch, from sketch. And after, uh, like it was a week of work, after a week, we were ready to show the interior to our chairman um, for like an official review uh, without going through any clay model or anything. So um, that was the first attempt we've done for that. And that was a um, good um, proof of concept for using Blender in the company as a um, modeling process. Something we experimented as well, I talked a little bit about that last year, was uh, doing some animation tests and um, rendering tests. So um, we had the scene, we had like, uh, that's the Thiago, Tata Thiago has been released um, April, I think. <laughs> um, and we had the studio um, where we are working. And we just like ask two of our modelers that are doing a little bit of visualization as well, say, okay, take the studio, take the car, do a 30 seconds animation and see what's going at, at the end. Um, so we analyzed a very big lack of organization because we didn't give them any storyboard or like they just have 30 seconds animation, a car and a studio. And at the end, there are no organization, no process nothing. So we started to think about having a process, a visualization process insights. And um, as well, we found out that um, it takes a huge amount of time to have that done. Um, and as we are a very, very small team in advanced design that we are four and peer, um, and we are three doing visualization. And at the same time, we are doing modeling as well. We don't really have the time to do everything. So I script. And, <laughs> and I, um, that, that was my first script, and that's not an easy one. <laughs> I build um, automatic uh, add-on to make automatic renderings and automatic animation. Um, to have a car, a wheel, an environment, and everything mixed together and give a, a file. Um, so the goal of this um, add-on was to produce first high quality renderings um, with Blender inside, um, inside the company, but it was um, more comparing two different models or two different car paints or like two different something. And in the same environment, in the same dynamics, so if we have an animation, it would like how the reflections like, uh, of the exterior environment are going to reflect on the cars and see more the shapes, um, compare the shapes, compare, compare everything between different cars, so you can import whichever car you want in the same environment if you want to, if you want to import a truck, that will work as well. Um, 
So how it works? I have three files first. I have the body of the car or the truck um, as long as it as long as it has wheels it works. Um, I have the file of the wheel separately. So basically I can put whichever wheel on whichever car. And I have a third file with an environment. Um, I combine all those three files as a link um, in a fourth file where I import um, rig system um, based on three dimension, the um, diameter of the wheels, uh, the wheel base of the car and the track. So then I can have the location of the wheels at the good place compared to the vehicles. And I can have the height of the vehicles as well. So everything is rigged um, on that system. And then after, um, the add-on just analyzed um, the environment file, take, um, see how many cameras it, ha it has, if the cameras are animated or not. Um, it's going to render which, uh, which single cameras and if it's animated, going to analyze if the first frame and the last frame are going to render whichever frame between the two frames and save everything in separate folders, obviously. Um, so then, if you imagine that um, um, Friday evening, um, I have to give renderings for Monday and I really don't want to um, spend my weekend at work just checking if uh, the renderings are done. I just press that button, and on Monday I come back and I have my, all my images done from all my cameras, and I just say, go, go to see my director and say, uh, uh, images are saved in that location. And it's like, it's like oh, great, thank you. <laughs> um, so that's basically what I have done this entire year. Um, so what's next for us now in um, TMETC or in, in, even in Tata Motors? Um, we are still look, um, trying to improve our process modeling and we, are, we still have the same issues than last year, but like the, uh, having a specific subdivide um, modifier that don't shrink the car. Um, still, want to have some more flexibilities and uh, proportional editing as well. Um, and, but most, most likely what we really, really want and what we really, it's to avoid the step Maya going from uh, Blender to Alias. So having a bridge between polygonal modeling to nerves without an extra step. Um, so then, we are still uh, doing some research and development in insights to m try to have some real uh, real time and um, virtual uh, rendering um, insight to have like um, interactive reviews with the chairman. So maybe I have like a headset and thing like this. Um, and we are still looking for improving our process and go further in the future of the visualization um, to keep, keep on with the competition of the other companies. Um, yeah, so now we'll let Pierre finish in. Thank you. Uh, basically, if you look on this slide, I like to call it uh, what's called the Blender effect. Um, first thing that happened after we deployed Blender was my boss said, you need to submit this as a technical paper. So I did. It's called InnoVista. So we submitted this paper. Now it's in the official archives, I guess. But it's about what's it's a leading edge technology and also a promising technology. Uh, I didn't make it to the finals, but now it's really you know, inside the company's uh, base of knowledge. Also, as we said, we use it now in CAS Advanced, uh, which is computer-assisted design. We use it in animation and rendering, and VR and R&D. And the, big, the next big one for me is uh, to assist our engineers. If you look at this slide, this is a wind tunnel slide, and they actually uh, use, they use Blender without me knowing it. And then they ask us, can you help? And basically, it's just you take one shot, render it, toss it, take another shot, render it, toss it. 
So I'm like, yeah, I don't know how to script that, so that's why I'm here. And see if anybody knows that. <laughs> I think, I don't know if he's here, I don't remember his name. Uh, the person from um, the um, Astronomic Center, because he, he's doing a little bit something like this as well. I don't know, maybe not in the room. Uh, he's taking, like, uh, if you remember the talk on Friday, yeah, he was taking some um, data from uh, the Astronomic Center and translated it, and it was sim sim simulation. So that's kind of what we're, yeah, if, if, if he hear me, can, if he can get in contact with us. <laughs> but what's interesting to me is we use Blender, and then we come to find out, hey, engineering uses Blender. I'm like, oh, OK, well, let's see if we can help each other out. Uh, I'll also uh, like to talk about our contribution to Blender. Um, Mathilde has started an industrial design group specifically for industrial design use in Blender. Uh, Rainer is still here from Kiska. Uh, Kiska and uh, TMETC are linked now with a non-disclosure agreement and strategic tie-up, so we are starting to form, you know, a little cartel. Uh, as Mathilde says, she spent two months in India and she just blew everybody away with the use of Blender in advanced design, so design in India now is using Blender. The last bit will be Italy. I'll probably make a trip to Italy before the end of the year, and I will make sure to preach the uh, gospel of Blender. Uh, my good friend Andrew Price, uh, I love you. The reason being uh, Blender guru for the weakest uh, Blender user in the room. Um, me, I'm just interested in getting the car, shade it, light it. OK, pretty, yay, so move on. So. Uh, we did buy the plugins, ProLighting Sky, ProLighting Studios, and for me, those are examples of you know plugins that work in our automotive workflow. And if those work, then we can share those, you know, share the knowledge with other automotive OEMs, and this way we can start growing the, you know, the Blender base of knowledge and the, the use of Blender in automotive design. Uh, on LinkedIn, the gentleman who just joined is from Volkswagen, and he showed a very, very big interest in using Blender as well. Uh, also, I did hear, um, I'm also, two more things. I'm a part of the UK Auto Council on Digital Tools, so basically, automakers in the UK meet, you know, a couple of times a year, and we discuss the use of digital tools in uh, automotive design, and I, I've just started to tell them that they should think about Blender and see how they could use Blender in other uses. And uh, let's see, was there anything else? Oh, one more thing is, you know, Mathilde has been the advocate for Blender at Tata, and uh, in the future, she will most likely break away from modeling altogether, even though she's really talented at nerve modeling, but she will most likely become more uh, part of the animation and visualization stream. So I think for years to come, you have a solid uh, advocate for Blender at uh, TMETC. Uh, finally, I did hear a couple of things, such as uh, when is Tata going to make a donation to Blender? And uh, while I don't sign the checks, I will make sure to push that agenda forward. Uh, hopefully, we'll make a donation before the end of the year. And. Uh, If you have any questions, please uh, come see us, and we'd love to talk to you. So once again, thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much.